who stood in front of the wooden portal and asked us for a breaks from time to time because they will leave the temple. It's bad. There are about 277 Houghton Temple. Visitors can stop at the rental kiosk. And as you walk down to this, never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, every game, in your life, have no shame, there's no time for the pain. Hey guys, back to my channel. This video guides you to see some fascinating places and outdoor activities when you are in Ubud, such as going to the traditional art market, rice terrace de Gala Alain, cross-country biking or cycling, and visiting some sacred Hindu temples and so on. And to begin with, firstly, I'd like to thank everyone who has supported me so far. And secondly, I'd like to invite those who haven't subscribed to my channel. So now let's get started. Ubud is a district in Gianya Regency in Bali, Indonesia. With the average altitude of 200-300 meters above sea level and therefore it's no surprise that the climate in Ubud and the surrounding is a way cooler as compared to other regions in Bali. You might not know that the name of Ubud was derived from Balinese or Javanese language Ubat or Obat in Indonesian language, which means medicine. The history of Ubud dates back in the 8th century when a holy person, Resi Markandeya, meditated on the Mount of Lao. It's an active volcano located in between East and Central Java and then he decided to start his holy journey to Bali, where he discovered the holy energy in Champuhan Ubud. Also many plants that can be used to cure disease and afterwards he built a sacred Gunung Lebah temple, Besaki temple and many other secret temples in Bali. Therefore, since then Ubud has been a very well-known city for people who seek out traditional medicine. If you had ever been to Bali, then you would have spotted some spiritual retreats or several meditation center. Pas, tega macet sekali di Ubud, guys. Mas, terima kasih, Mas. Terima kasih. Wow. wow. Window shopping in the art market in Ubud or buying souvenirs here is what tourists do when visiting Ubud. It's not obligation, but it is a very popular traditional market where visitors can shop a variety of products from Balinese handicrafts, paintings to fashions. And you can always ask for the best price from the given price tags if you are interested to buy. Discovering picturesque places in Ubud is a must-do activity. Rice Terrace Tagalalang is one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Bali that visitors should see. To come here, Visitors can ride a taxi or rent a motorbike. It takes about 20 minutes from the center of Ubud. The entrance fee is about 25,000 rupiah or about 1.47 Swiss franc depending on the exchange rate and it includes parking fee. Strolling through the walking path in the middle of rice field is an amazing activity. And of course this is an adventurous exploration because you have to go down and up crossing different paddy fields. My friends and I were so interested in exploring this rice field, therefore we decided to hike down and up the paddy field as soon as we passed the main entrance. We 
have to really pay attention to our steps because uh, it looks uh, slippery when we don't have uh, correct uh, tracking shoes. Oh, and then and I'm wearing just sandals, so it's really <laughs> wow. I don't want to fall, and you guys also don't want to fall while enjoying the view, right? So really have to pay attention. <laughs> Look at the view, guys. Oui, je vous oui. Ouais, ouais, j'arrive, on arrive. To go further down the rice fields, we unfortunately had to negotiate with a farmer who stood in front of the wooden portal and asked us for another entrance fee. The farmer explained to me that the ticket we paid up front had limited access. So as we wanted to explore for more, we gave up and paid about 120,000 rupiah for 12 people instead of 240,000 rupiah. Indeed, we were a bit disappointed to have dealt with the kind of illegal charges as we were not informed before. Well, I hope that the management works on it and ensures that this will not reoccur in the future. Or at least they have to inform visitors at the ticket counter that there will be additional charge if visitors want to go and explore further up. Despite this issue, we hiked up down, crossing the pipe and bamboo bridges and we really enjoyed the nature during our walking tour, which lasted for more than an hour. The green landscape, the irrigation system passed down by a holy person, Rasi Markandeya, in the 8th century will mesmerize you and tempt everyone to take photos or make films. We found that this was a truly amazing experience. Cool. Uh, allez, tout le monde traverse comme ça. Whoa! Whoa! Now we're going to what? Oh. Wow! Everybody, yes? Stop, you see? Yeah! Wow! Merci! Allez, le deux vite, vite, Daniel! Ah bah bon, c'est pas grave, allez Wow Est-ce que tout le monde peut voir ici Attends. Wow On est là Yeah Hey, look Attendez, attendez Hey Cheers tout le monde <rire> So what other activity visitors can do apart from strolling through the paddy's fields is they can enjoy the beautiful surrounding green landscape while sipping coffee, tea or drinking fresh coconut juice at these cafes. Swinging with provided low dress for the women is also a good option. However, these activities do not include the entrance fee. Another interesting activity that visitors can do in Ubud is cross-country biking. To begin with, we had to drive from our hotel to a meeting point where we were then transported to the bike station. Two guys who will come to us at the bike station were apparently our guides. They provided us with a short briefing before kicking off our biking tour. We started off on pedaling our bikes downhill along the rice fields and rivers. Then past the flat landscape, stop at the temple to get the cultural information, cross the rural villages and rice fields again. We took breaks from time to time because the landscape mesmerized us. 
this outdoor activity lasted not more than two hours from the bike station to the first meeting point where we had our lunch with very yummy Balinese cuisine. We had so much fun indeed and we recommend you guys to give it a try. Next visit will be Gunung Kawi Temple in Tampak Siring. It's one of the stunning and oldest temples in Bali. Gunung Kawi Temple carved by the King Anak Wungsu in the 11th century on the rock's surface. According to the theory, this temple was built with the objective of honoring the death of his father, King Udayana, and Warmadewa dynasty. The existence of this temple remains debatable, but it's not my interest to diffuse the dispute. So, to visit Gunung Kawi Temple, visitors only need approximately 30 minutes drive from the city center of Ubud, or about two hours from Kuta. But again, it all depends on the traffic jam. To date, no online taxi is available in Ubud. However, you guys can hire a local taxi driver to ease your day trip. Either way, you can rent a motorbike. Entrance fee is about 25,000 rupiah for the local tourists and 50,000 rupiah for the foreign tourist. Sarong and accessories have to be worn and this includes in the entrance fee, but you must return them when you leave the temple. It's better to bring your own sarongs if you have one. As this is one of the sacred temples for the Balinese, women are not allowed to enter the temple complex when they have period. So to reach this temple site, visitors have to pass nearly 300 footpath stairways towards the river, paddy terraces, beautiful green valley surrounded by coconut trees. The first temple complex can be found on the left hand side and the second temple complex can be found after crossing the river. After visiting the temple site for at least two hours, visitors climb up and can find new attractions and try the swing and zip line. However, you guys have to pay directly, so make sure you have extra cash. For zip line, it costs about 200 or 250,000 rupiah for three times right. You can also chill out a bit and enjoy the view while drinking your coconut fruits or soft drinks. Now let me take you to the traditional village called Panglipuran in the district of Bangli. Teman-teman, uh, saya saat ini ada di desa adat Panglipuran, Bali. Dan teman-teman ini semua kita akan masuk ke desa ini, ya. Ya, ikuti terus perjalanan kami. Depan ini adalah tempat masuk para wisatawan, ya. Yang di sini sebelah kiri ini adalah loket di mana kalian bisa beli tiketnya. Untuk bule, untuk warga negara asing itu 50.000, untuk dewasa, untuk anak-anak 30.000. Kalau Indonesia cuma bayar 25.000, murah kan? Jadi kalian kalau ingin ke eh, desa penglipuran, desa adat Bali ini yang eh, dijaga eh, kelestariannya, adatnya, budayanya, silakan saja ke sini ya. Nah, desa penglipuran ini desa adat uh, Bali asli, ya. Jadi ini desa yang spesial sekali, ya, uh, yang sangat uh, dijaga ke budayanya, tradisinya. Jadi orang-orang itu yang kesini bisa melihat langsung kegiatan orang-orang kampung di sini gitu. Ya itu teman-teman saya, orang-orang oh, bule dari uh, Swiss, ya. ya nah itu. <laughs>
Kuran village is situated at about 500-600 meters above sea level, so the temperature is really nice. It's about an hour drive from Ubud center or one and a half hour drive from the Ngurarai airport. There are about 277 households consisting of 1,111 people in this village who have main profession like farmers, artists, handicrafts, sellers, tour guides, civil servants and so on. This village has 112 hectares of land where most area is used for agriculture and forestry and the rest is exercised for residents and public facility. On the 19 October 2023, an international organization other the UN, namely United Nations World Tourism Organization, has awarded this Panglipuran village as the 54 world's best tourism villages out of 260 villages from 60 different nations. What makes people like to visit this tourism village is the inhabitants preserve the principle of three hita karana to guide their daily lives such as maintaining their relationship with God, humans to humans, different society and maintaining the relationship between human and the environment. Based on my conversation with one of the guardians in the village, I was told that all inhabitants have the same right, which means that everyone is equal. No high and lower caste between themselves. They all work together to make their living conditions better and better. <laughs> These are the athletes, badminton athletes from uh, Geneva, Switzerland. Hey! Yay! <laughs> These are the athletes, badminton athletes from Switzerland. Yeah! Peace season F. Push back! Voilà, la panelle. Emma Valentin Guillaume. <laughs> After visiting the traditional village, we went to Kohen Temple as it is not far from the traditional village which is approximately 15 minutes drive. Visitors can find the Kohen Temple easily because this temple site is located just on the side of the main road. Kohen Temple is an ancient and a very unique temple where the Balinese people who live in the Chimpaga village call it as Young Happy Temple. It's believed to be built in the 8th century. The uniqueness can be found in the entrance where Kurung Temple is used instead of Benta Temple which looks Kayangan Temple that people can see in most temple in Bali. Visitors will find the Bali Kulkul on the trunk of the banyan tree when they are entering the temple instead of its built separately. This second uniqueness of Kahan temple is very obvious and can be distinguished from the other existing temples in Bali. To enter the Kahan temple, visitors can stop at the rental kiosk located just across the road to borrow the sarongs and waste cloth with a donation in exchange. It's about 10,000 rupiah or one Swiss franc per person. Bearing in mind that women in their period are not allowed to enter the temple. After wearing the sarongs, visitors have to walk on the stone stairways. As the entrance is high, visitors can turn around to see the surrounding village from the gate. The best time to visit this temple is during daytime or when there is a ceremony where the temple is fully decorated. Check out with your local guides before visiting. The Gunungan Waterfall, a picturesque natural marvel, graces the landscape of Bali, Indonesia. It's situated in the charming Tegunungan Kemenu village, district Sukawati in the region of Gianyar. 
This captivating waterfall offers a serene escape into the heart of nature's beauty. It has to become a must-visit destination when visiting or staying in a boat. Prepare your swim trunk and towel before dipping into the pool below the cascade. Its surrounding is embellished with a profusion of green leaves. To reach the Gunungan waterfall from Ubud Central, visitors only need about 20 or 25 minutes drive. You can use the Google GPS to guide you or hire the local taxi driver or ride a car sharing with your travel mates. Entrance fee is about 20,000 rupiah per person adult for sure and 5,000 rupiah for parking fee. The staff at the ticket counter will stamp your skin as an entrance pass in exchange of, of your entrance ticket you bought. And as you walk down to the stone stairways, you may see food stalls art shops. It's always full of tourists during tea time, so if you wish to have a peaceful moment, you could come early morning. Et voilà, I hope you find this video interesting and it helps you to get some ideas where to go, what to do when you are about to visit Ubud in Bali, Indonesia. And of course, there are still many more wonderful places of interest that you guys can explore. And if you like this video, do not hesitate to give your thumbs up, click subscribe, and give your comment. Also, share this video with your friends. Till here, I'm Adi Le Javani. Thanks a lot for watching and supporting my channel. See you again next time. Ciao.